Um, David, let me ask you a question. Is, is that if I were to ask you just what's your number one thing that you would like to see improved, you know, in supporting of military aircraft today? What's the number one thing you'd like to see improved? Well, that's a great question, Mark. Um, there's probably 10,000 things I'd like to see, but um, I, I think honestly for, for our military, I think the best thing would be a better uh, supply chain tool that could be used across the, the entire military that is tied direct into the supplier network. Um, it just, you know, flying military aircraft and mission readiness comes down to a lot of factors, but you know, in, in, in simplicity, if you don't have the right part at the right time, you're, you're hitting a blank wall. So uh, we've got to have some way of increasing the Navy supply system and improving it to make sure that the parts are there when they're supposed to be there. Yeah, I think that's very well said. Thank you very much. Manoj, yeah. I want to ask you sort of a similar question is, is that with your knowledge and experience of commercial systems, you know, that Ramco has today, What's the biggest thing that you would like to be able to provide to the military to help them? Yeah, I think it's it's all about um, digital transformation. That's where I would go, right? I mean, again, of course, um, AIML engine for forecasting and planning is, of course, great. But if you don't have it at the very forefront when you are actually operating your aircraft or other vehicles, and if you don't have a way to capture all that information into a digital uh, format, then everything just stops right there, right? Then you can never use that data. So I think digitizing every aspect of your operations, being able to collect the data coming out of that in a digital format and having all the digital um, plan and manuals and maintenance programs tying all that together really improves the power of what can be done with the AI ML. So that's where I would say we would go, um, a leaf that we can take from the commercial aviation side. Excellent. Yeah. That, uh, go ahead, David. Yeah, Mark, if I can add to that, because Manoj, you, you brought something really, really nice to, to light is, you know, as a maintenance person, when you go to the aircraft, how wonderful would it be to have a tablet uh, with all of your maintenance manuals right there available to you, where you can also background and go right back into the supply system and make your request live at the aircraft, or even better, if needed, communicate to your supervisor, I had a problem. This is the part I need. Here's a picture of it. Here's a live stream of it. Um, that would just make the, the whole maintenance world so much better. Um, and it would really keep people tied together. I, I just think there's just vast improvements can be made here. But with just one use case that we just described, you captured the essence of digital transformation, right? Yeah. Having everything digitally available and be able to have interconnected uh, availability and visibility and be able to procure and then get the aircraft flying again. That's the essence of it. Absolutely, yeah. David. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's really a lot of what digital transformation is all about. Hey, I want to ask one more follow up question, if I could, is, is that, you know, in the commercial world, we continue to talk about, um, you know, predictive maintenance. And, uh, you know, I know that a lot of that revolves around data and having good information and having good artificial intelligence. And so, you know, I want to ask you this question, Manoj, is, is it, what do you think is one of the key abilities to be able to provide better predictive maintenance? Yeah, I think it boils down to being able to capture um, the data, both structured and unstructured data, right? Because typically when we talk about data and the vastness of it, it is all about what is coming from the historical uh, reliability and the replacement of the parts, et cetera, et cetera, right? But I think there's a lot of, today's digital world provides us with the opportunity to capture a lot of unstructured data, which includes text, pictures, videos, and other forms of collaboration, social media, and other communications. It would be really wonderful to actually make the use of the power of AIML to take both the unstructured and the structured data, and then be able to create the predictive maintenance I think that would be the end nirvana, the goal of what we can do with this uh, with this uh, power. Yeah, I, I really believe that as well, uh, Manoj, and I'll tell you why, is that, um, uh, you know, our data forms are coming from many different sources, all right? Yeah. And we can't control the format of all the data that's coming right. toward us. We can continue to promote, you know, structured data and enhance, you know, data and want for it to be more digital, 
But the reality is, is that, you know, you said it at the beginning, David, there are aircraft that are in different phases of their life cycle. And some of them were designed 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. All right. And we're still using them. And, and so today we don't have full control over that type of data. And so I, I really believe what you said is really a key important part of my notes is, is that we have to be able to ingest lots of different kinds of data and to be able to maximize our use of it to provide the best information, actionable intelligence possible, you know, from that data. I think that's really a critical component of the success of digital transformation. Uh, gentlemen, you know, the topic of FMS for military sales always seems to come up when we're talking about military and defense. Um, David, what are some of the big challenges in supporting aircraft that have been part of FMS sales and aircraft that are out in the field? So, Mark, for many, many years, um, the international operators have heavily relied on FMS or foreign military sales. Um, this is basically a program that's set up to tie back into the Air Force or the Navy or the Army in direct support of the legacy platforms that are out there. For many years, that program has run fairly well. Um, however, as of late, over the last five plus years, uh, for many of these legacy platforms, that program is an epic failure for a variety of reasons. Uh, one, the warehouses are not being stocked with parts anymore. Uh, two, the response time from the FMS people, that would be the, the government here in the United States, is very, very slow. Um, and so the operators are faced with challenges of, we need a different solution. We need a different way to tie into industry. Um, the FMS going forward on the legacy platforms is going to be a complete uh, dead stop in the very near term. Uh, so there's got to be a better solution out there to provide that communication between the end user and, and their depots and procurement teams to the supplier network here in the United States. So, Manoj, how are you helping support this challenge of the problems that they're having that, that was just described? Yeah, so I think uh, David brought a very good point that you know, right now the way the whole structure is that these foreign governments and entities are heavily dependent on the U.S. Um, DOD and other uh, prime contractors for the supply and the system that gets used. So I think the way at least we look at it is if these foreign entities had the option and the opportunity to use a system like Ramco that has uh, legs in both defense and the commercial world, I think we'll be able to provide visibility and availability of uh, various options and supplies across multiple different regions and locations to those uh, foreign entities and, and give them a much better and effective way of operating those um, assets or aircraft. So that's where our um, value comes into these foreign militaries. Okay, so not only would we be able to support, um, you know, additional sales, you know, from a U.S. perspective, but you're really talking about helping the FMS operators so that they'll be able to operate those aircraft more efficiently. And it goes back to the discussions that we had about readiness and making them exactly. more ready. Is that really what you're talking about? Exactly, exactly. It doesn't really matter who offers that system, whether it is offered by one of the prime contractor CLS providers here in the U.S. or gets used directly by the foreign entities. As long as there's an option to connect, interconnect with multiple different supply sources for them to be able to have much higher mission readiness as possible. 